what's up everybody this time we are back in texas in san antonio playing at rounders poker club we're gonna be playing some 5 5 10 no limit hold'em and plo round of each and one of the first hands of the night i'm gonna wake up yes wake up with 8-4 suited on the button and this is going to be during the famous knit game whoever is the last person left with their knit button is going to have to pay each player at the table 25 dollars which means it's going to be 175 dollars since we're sitting eight-handed and my opponent beto is going to be limping in low jack it's going to fold around to me on the button and you already know me i hate when people limp to my right we're going to be bumping it up i put in an iso and i make it 50 dollars to go it is going to fold all the way back around to my opponent and low jack and they're going to be putting in the call so we're going to be going heads up to a flop of seven ten nine two clubs oh baby what a time to have eight four suited in your hand i mean i'm almost supposed to never have this hand here but felt like it was a great opportunity to have some position against a limper and be able to get rid of my knit button early so i don't have to pay the rest of the table $175. That's about 17 and a half big blinds or so if you think about it. So it's a lot of money. But yeah, we're looking pretty good here. Have an open ended straight flush draw. No complaints at all. My opponent not being a pre flop aggressor and being a limper. He's going to be put it in the check. And yes, we're going to be put it in the C bet here. Would love to just take it down now as I don't have a made hand, but no complaints if they do call so i do grab my chips and i'm going to put it in a decent bet size here i make it 80 dollars to go my opponent does lay down their cards and they did end up laying down pocket deuces pocket rubber duckies no good here especially not having any club in their hand and i do flip over and show my cards as in order to get rid of the nip button after you win a hand you do have to show your cards if you forget you do have to keep it so make sure if you ever play this game, show your damn cards. And next hand, oh baby, we're really going to wake up with it this time. In the under the gun, $20 straddle, I get dealt pocket queens, the ladies. You already know it's my favorite hand of all time. And to even get it in the straddle is like 100 times better. And it's going to fold to my opponent in low jack. They're going to be putting in a limp for $20. Hijack's also going to be putting in a limp. I don't know why do I have such a big hand and everybody's limping here. Pissing me off a little bit. And then it does fold all the way around to big blind. And they're going to be putting in a limp as well. Why can't somebody just raise an ISO so I can freaking three bet or do something here? But hey, at least we have pocket queens here. And the knit game is on again. So this is a great opportunity to get rid of my knit button. So you already know we're not going to take this four ways to the post. I'm going to be bumping it up, putting in that sexy ISO preflop all the way up to $200. And surprisingly, low jack's gonna fold king nine suited, high jack's gonna fold jack eight suited, and then even the big blind, not wanting to play out of position, is gonna fold ace three suited. With these holdings, I would expect that at least one of my opponents to come along based on how this game has been going so far, being a little bit loose. But hey, at least I do take down almost $100 uncontested, and I get rid of my knit button, once again, saving $175. And for this hand, it's time for some PLO action with that round of each going on. And we're going to have the $20 straddle on. And we're going to be in the under the gun straddle with pocket queens, the ladies again. Also with the king of hearts and two of spades. So we are double suited here. And it's going to fold around to my opponent and cut off. They're already going to be starting off repping a pretty strong range. They bet pot, which is $75. It does fold around to me in the straddle. And I'm going to be calling this pot bet. And unfortunately, the person to my left is going to re-pop it up all the way to $300. That's not what I wanted to happen. Would have loved to just see them call and we just get to take this to the post. My opponent in cutoff, who originally is the pre-flop aggressor, just calls this bet. And now I am sandwiched in between these players. And I know that pocket queens isn't the greatest start in hand here in plo fully aware of that not a plo expert by the way i felt this would be a great opportunity with the original razor not repopping it up themselves and just flat in i said hey f it i have pocket queens it's my favorite hand i'm double suited if some random other person calls but wouldn't it be beautiful just fucking beautiful if everybody just folds 
Because who takes this line here with pocket queens? I don't think that many people would do that. So yes, that's right. I'm going for it. I'm repotting it up all the way to $1,200. And unfortunately, within two seconds, my opponent to my left puts in the call. That is not what I wanted to see. Not looking pretty good here. And then the opponent in cutoff thus fold. So we are going to be going heads up at least. I don't have much money behind though. So a flop of... 6-3 jack, 2 clubs. This is not what I wanted to see. At least there's one heart on the board, but come on. It could have been more spades, more hearts, more of just something to give me a higher percent equity here. And I know the graphic does say I go all in for $635. That's not how much I had. I only have roughly $300 behind here. So essentially, I am all in for $1,500. My opponent to my left does pretty much put in a snap call. And we go straight to the run out. And it's going to come seven of spades, nine of clubs. Horrible run out here for my hand. And even before that, my opponent already showed me that they had pocket kings from the flop. So I basically was only drawing live to hitting some random two pier or hitting a set of queens. Or going runner, runner, flush, runner, runner, straight. So just a really rough spot here. I unfortunately just lit $1,500 on fire. And what is the lesson learned here? Just have to be careful playing PLO. I know it's a round of each. This is what I signed up for. This is the first time I've played PLO outside of just playing bomb pots for this long of a time. So yeah, just a rough spot for me. Thought I can get a little bit out of control here. But yeah, my opponent wakes up with it. Nothing I can do. I ran it and just lost. So we're just going to have to take the L and move on to the next hand. Let's hope maybe we can win a pot in PLO to make up for it. And this hand is going to be an interesting one. Why? Because the Nick game is on again. But this time, I didn't get rid of my button early. It is just SETI, aka Poker Traveler, and I in this hand. And whoever fails to get rid of the Nick button is going to be losing $175. With that factor coming into play, SETI puts in the straddle for $20. And of course, I'm not going to allow him to do this. I'm going to restraddle him. I make it $40 to go just to put pressure on him and to make it so that I'm going to be the last person to act and control all of the action for this hand. And it's going to fold around to my opponent and hijack. And they're not going to be raising with this $40 straddle on. I mean, there's not that many people at the table with $4,000. So almost nobody has 100 big blinds in front of them. Hell, even I only have $1,500, $1,600 which pretty much means I only have 40 big blinds in his hand. Crazy way to look at it, but that's the situation we're in right now. And it's going to fold all the way around to my opponent and hijack. They're going to be putting in a limp for $40. Cutoff is going to be limping as well. And it does fold to SETI. And under the gun plus one, he's going to be limping. And I'm like, yo, I got pocket nines. It's a pretty good fucking hand. There's almost $160 of dead money. And not only that, if I do win... Or if everybody folds, I get an additional $25 from SETI. And I don't have to pay $175 out. So, hey, y'all already know what time it is. We're going for it. It's going to be an Aunt Jamama moment. I'm going to be all in with pocket nines. And hijack is going to be laying down pocket fives here. Cutoff is going to be laying down king 10 offsuit. And then when it comes back to SETI, he goes into the tank. He is thinking about the fact that if he folds, I automatically win the net game here. So not only is he losing his $40, he's also losing $175 automatically to the entire table. So he goes into the tank and I'm like, damn, he's really thinking about calling. I have to be ahead here. But I'm like, hey, do what you got to do. And eventually he does flick in the call and it's going to be a crazy one. Let's see if we can find a hold. Let's go straight to the run out. And the run out is going to come five deuce jack. He's already telling me that I'm pretty good here. Turn comes the eight of spades. And then the river comes the ace of spades. I'm like, there's no way in hell I'm going to win with this run out. Hitting the ace on the river after he said I was good. But he still says, nah, Brandon, you got it. I have seven high. And I said, are you dead ass? And he said, yes, I have seven high. He has seven for a suited. And I show my pocket nines to scoop the massive pot. And it's a crazy pot, 
I win a little bit over $3,000 just with pocket nines. And that's the net game, ladies and gentlemen. It gets you into some crazy spots. Love that I didn't just have Ace King here and I just had an over peer, which means said it was drawing very, 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 very thin pre flop here. So love to see it. This will for sure make up for that horrible punt with pocket queens for almost $1,500. So, way to balance things out there for my crazy, ridiculous play and just happen to find a big hole with pocket nines. And we're back to some PLO action. But for this one, at least we have a good start in hand this time. We're going to have pocket aces with a lady and a three. Unfortunately, we are not suited in any way, but hey, we have pocket aces. Let's see if we can find some sets. And I am going to be in the $20 straddle, which is pretty good. Hijack's going to be putting in a limp for 20. Thought I was going to be putting in a limp. Small blind, big blind, and even the $10 auto straddle is going to be limping as well. And I have a really good hand here. We did put that $20 straddle on and we wake up for it. No way. We're going to be taking this pot six ways, of course. That would be literally insane. So you already know what time it is. We're going to be potting it, and we're going to be raising it up all the way to $140. And I get my wish a little bit. Instead of going to the flop six ways, looks like we're only going to be getting calls from cutoff, small blind, and under the gun. So we're just going to be going four ways, and the flop's going to come king, seven, four, rainbow. If there's ever a better flop for aces, this is probably it. No flushes out there, only straight drawers, and a high card is a king. I'm feeling extremely good with everybody just putting in that $20 limp before me. Nobody should have pocket kings with these lines being taken. So yeah, have to be in a good spot. And yeah, we have about $600 in the middle. Not going to be going crazy, just potting it away here with NPLO. No point in doing that. Just going to be putting out a normal bet here, and I'll make it $220 to go. My opponent in cutoff is going to be folding. Bubbles and small blinds is going to be putting in the call. And Sadie to my direct right is going to be putting in the fold. So pretty good result there. Once again, we lose another two players. So we're just going to be heads up. And thankfully, I have position two as well. And we're going to be going to the turn. And it comes the five of hearts. Not the greatest turn here. That straight just came in. If my opponent does have a hand like 6-3 or 8-6 plus... Two pair combos can come in as well. So I do have to tread very cautiously here because I don't have two cards to worry about. I have four cards in my opponent's hand to worry about. And with about $1,000 in the middle, just like I said, I have to worry. My opponent, she grabs chips and she starts to donk. Yeah, she just leads away on the five of hearts. And I'm like, damn, I am pretty worried here. But I am sitting with pocket aces and... I do have that gutter if a deuce was to roll off. Yes, my opponent can have straights. But still, if they're just donking something like some random two pair, etc. I am still drawing pretty live to that. And also, a set of aces could be good on the river. So yeah, not going to go anywhere yet. I'm going to be putting in the call. And we go to the river and it comes the king of diamonds. And in my mind, I'm like, damn, this has got to be the worst river ever. But... Looking at the corner of my eye, my opponent, she does not immediately put out a bet. She goes into the tank for about 30 seconds plus almost a minute. And I'm like, well, at this point, she cannot have a king. This must have been a really rough card for whatever she had. And eventually, she ends up putting it in the check. And there's no reason for me to bet here, especially receiving that donk on the turn. I'm hoping for some reason that King just ruined her hand and isn't the card that she wanted to see. Because now I have two peers, aces and kings. So I do decide to check back. And Bubbles, she ends up showing 7-5 for two peer that she hit on the turn. So that's what she was donking and leading with. And I flip over my pocket aces for a better two peer. What a beautiful run out. That is the only card that could appear to help me out here. I mean, yeah, the four could appear as well. That would have caused some problems. But yeah, what a great run out. Take down a pot of $1,640. Playing PLO. Let's get it. I wanted to win a big one playing PLO. And I finally get to. And this is the same day post stream. But now we're just going to be playing 1-3. As 2-5 wasn't running late at night at rounders. And for the first hand... In this game, I'm going to be dealt 10-8 suited in middle position. 
no straddle on this time and it is going to fold around to me and i'm going to be opening for 30 dollars folds to my opponent and small blind they're going to be put it in the call and big blind is going to be folding so we're going to be going heads up to a flop of four ten ten two hearts looking pretty good here flopping trips for one of my first hands sitting down at the table love to see it my opponent does put in a check and yes i'm going to be putting in a seabed here just hope my opponent has something to continue with grab my chips put out a small wager i'll just make it ten dollars to go and it looks like my opponent isn't going anywhere yet they flick in the call and we go to the turn and it comes in eight ball corner pocket the eight of hearts oh, are you kidding me that is like the best turn i could possibly see not only do i turn a boat with the eight ball if my opponent just turned a flush i am going to get a decent amount of money so let's hope and let's get paid my opponent puts in a check and this time around on this card with the flush coming in i know i do have the nuts and i could already be getting paid by a flush i decide hey i'm gonna chill this time i'm gonna check back and we go to the river and it comes the seven of spades not too crazy of a river but yes sometimes my opponent isn't always gonna have a flush here sometimes they can have some random floats you just never know here with my small bet on the flop right and i do get my wish i see that they start to grab chips they load up a bet and they make it 40 dollars to go and you already know what time it is we're definitely gonna have to go for it here i'm thinking about my size in my head how much do i want to raise and what's the most i can raise that my opponent is going to be paying me off with in relative to the pot and also relative to their bet size here on the river so i'm thinking 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 and i decide yes we're going massive here i have a boat i grab my chips and i raise in position all the way up to 250 dollars a little bit over a 6 x raise yes that is fucking massive and music to my ears when my opponent is already grabbing a chip and he flicks in the call within about two seconds and i let them know i got a boat <laughs> and they shake their head laugh it up a little bit say nice hand and they turn over the nut flush ace six of hearts what a beautiful turn for them let me know in the comments below do you like my check back there on the turn or do you feel like i should have just went for the triple barrel let me know in the comments below and shout out to my opponent here for being such a good sport here he let me know he found my vlog and he's been watching a lot of them recently so shout out to this player for taking a little beef for me and even later on in the night he was kind enough to pay for my food when i ordered a chicken sandwich and a little bit of dessert like that's just amazing so shout out to this individual what a gentleman love to see it so shout out for him from taking his own money and spending it on me this person is already supporting me just by watching so shout out to him i love it can't wait to play against you again in texas and hey maybe it'll be at rounders i do love the venue so once again shout out to him greatly appreciate it man and next hand i'm gonna get dealt a seven of hearts on the button the ten dollar straddle is gonna be on and we're gonna have a bunch of limpers from under the gun and middle position there's about fifty dollars of dead money in the middle so that's the straddle plus four extra limpers so you already know what time it is i'm not just gonna be limping and bumping here i'm gonna go for it with all of this dead money in the middle so i decide to iso and i bump it up all the way to eighty dollars and unfortunately to my left i guess small blind must have woke up with something they go all in for 314 dollars big blind is gonna fold the straddle is gonna fold everybody's gonna fold all the way back around to me and i'm like uh what do i do here i already have 80 in the middle they go all in for 314 dollars which is 4x my size 50 dollars of dead money in the middle i mean do i have the odds to call here do i care about the odds to call here with 87 suited uh, I mean, not really. I'm just gambling at this point. So after odds, I'm going to go for it. I grab a chip and I say, hey, I could be behind here. But let's just pray to have ace king and get one of those 35, 65, 40, 60 spots. You know, that kind of thing. So I do take my chip. I flick in the call. Ask them how many times they want to run it. They say one time. I'm like, all right, no problem. Let's go straight to the run out. One time. One time. Yeah, one time. Okay, rip it. Oh, here we go. Once. We got eight, seven, two. Let's see. Mm. 
Oh, I hit my king right on the flop. Nice bet. This could get better. That, I think I just lost. And we do go to it. And it comes 9 king 7. I'm already like, oh man, I gotta be dead. They did let me know I was ahead. But then the ace comes on a turn. I'm like, okay, now I really have to be losing. Then a 9 of hearts comes on a river. And I already had turned over my 8-7 suited. I usually always turn over when I go in all in. I don't like this hiding my cards thing. I feel like it's more fun when you just see the cards for a sweat, to be honest. But yeah, at the end of it, my opponent ends up turning over. Ace-10 offsuit. I mean, this is a perfect hand to see, especially when you get it in 8-7 suited. So I was ahead on the flop. Unfortunately, just came a bad turn and nothing I could do about it. We're just going to have to pay the person $300. And we're going to have to move on to the next hand and hope things can get better. And next hand, I'm going to get dealt 10-8 offsuit in early position. I do put out a raise of $30, which was a blind raise. I didn't know here if you raise after the straddle. Well, not if you raise after the straddle. More so, if you straddle after the straddle, it is not considered a straddle. It is considered a blind raise. I was unaware of that. I was trying to put in a straddle. So they consider it a blind raise. And it does fold to my opponent in hijack. They put in a call, Button puts in a call, and of course, the $10 straddle says I fit. They're coming along as well. So we're going to be going four ways to a flop of 6, 7, 9, all hearts, monotone board. So I do flop a straight, but I don't have a heart in my hand. I know a rough spot, but could be good here if we can dodge a heart at some point. But yeah, the straddle is going to be put in the check. I'm going to be put in the check. Opponent in hijack grabs their chips. They make it roughly 50% of the pot, $50 to go. Button's gonna be folding. Straddle's gonna be putting in the call. And yeah, can't go anywhere yet. Flopping a straight. I know I could be losing to a flush already, but maybe somebody just has a single heart in their hand. So not gonna fold yet. I put in a call. We go to the turn and it comes the seven of diamonds. Pretty good turn here. Yes, could be losing the boats now, but more so worried about the flush to be honest. And opponent to my right is gonna be put in the check. I put in the check and the man in hijack says they're not slowing down. They're grabbing their chips. They're loading up a bet and they make it $100 to go. This time the straddle is going to fold. So now we just heads up and I'm like, okay, all right. Still not going to go anywhere yet. I'll flick in the call and we go to the river and it comes the 10 of hearts. Now that is the river I did not want to see. I do end up putting in the check. They're still not slowing down. They grab their chips and I see this stupid, ridiculously small, whatever thing, wager you want to call it. And they make it $100 to go. Extremely small relative to the size of the pot. And they're saying, you know, you have to fold, just let it go. I have a flush, blah, blah, blah. They're doing all of this talking. Doesn't really affect me. I'm just more so thinking, hey, with this bet size, could I still be good here? Do they have a flush? I mean, yeah, they can have a flush, but sometimes they can just have nothing. Really weird spot here. And I do think about it. And after weighing it a bunch of factors, I do end up flicking in the call. And my opponent turns over and they turn over the nine of spades. And I take my cards and I turn over and say, well, I got the straight. And then a couple of seconds goes by and they grab the other card and they turn over the two of hearts for the flush. And I'm like, wait a minute, I just got slow roll. And to be completely honest, I have never been slow rolled in live poker. I guess if there was a game for it to happen and maybe be a little bit okay with it, maybe it's a 1-3 table. I guess that's the time to get slow rolled. Wasn't that much money in the pot. Not the greatest, biggest deal in the world. Yes, I did say that. Not the greatest, biggest, whatever, you know, just use that word twice. But whatever, deal in the world. But yeah, the man just slow rolled me. I mean... That's low-key disrespectful. I honestly don't think you should ever be slow rolling people. I don't ever slow roll anybody, especially somebody, hey, that you don't know. Kind of rough to be doing that. Like, I've only personally slow rolled a friend before who has slow rolled me. I don't really like to do that. I think it's kind of messed up. He did say he's seen me play online and stuff like that. So maybe that was his reason for slow rolling. If it was, kudos, no problem. But I'm really just hoping he does not do this to normal, random other people. I think it would just be uncalled for, and it's just not a nice thing to do. Don't go slow rolling people, ladies and gentlemen. It's not fun. But hey, have you ever had a time if you've been slow rolled and you weren't as okay about it as I was? If so, let me know the hand in the situation in the comments below. And for this hand, we're going to wake up with it. Pocket Kings, the Cowboys. Dude, did you see them yesterday? In cutoff position. 
and my opponent and under the gun is going to be opening all the way to $40. Are you kidding me? This is a massive open here from under the gun in just a 1-3 game. There is a $5 button straddle going on during this hand, but still pretty massive open in size here. Pretty much 8x the button straddle. But hey, I'm not complaining. I wake up with it. I got pocket kings. I got the cowboys. No problems or worries here. And it does fold to me and cut off. And I'm going to put it in that three bet. Of course I am. Grab my chips and I make it $110 to go. Does fold all the way back around to my opponent. I mean, there's so much money in the spot already. Hoping they put in a call. And yes, I get my wish. They end up flicking it in. So we'll be going heads up to a flop of seven, eight deuce, two hearts. Pretty good flop for pocket kings. And I have the king of hearts in my hand. If there was anything crazy that's going to happen here. And as I'm feeling good about it, something crazy does happen. My opponent announces they're going to be all in. And I'm like, what? <laughs> all in? They put in $610. And I'm thinking to myself, well, there's ever a time I can call this big of a donk jam. I guess it's now with pocket kings. This is 3x pot, ladies and gentlemen. That's pretty, I mean, it's pretty gigantic, if you get what I'm saying. So, yeah, didn't think much about it, though. I have pocket kings. I can sometimes be ahead against hands in my opponent's range that they're going to donk jam 3x pot here. So if that reason and other factors at play here, I take a chip within five seconds and I take it. I flick in the call, hoping to see the good news. We do decide to run it one time. I mean, we didn't really talk about it. So it was just predetermined we're going to run it one time, which is fine. And yeah, before the rest of the cards came out, they had already turned over pocket eights. I'm like, damn, my second favorite hand is doing me dirty here. And in that eight ball corner pocket on the flop. Why couldn't this boy just come like five, four, three or something? Maybe they do the same thing. But yeah, they already have a set. We're going to have to hit a king to beat them. Let's go straight to the run out. Let's run it one time. And yes, not the most favorable run out for me. Turn comes a six. And whoever comes, my lady. Not the time I needed her. But hey, just going to have to take this big L here. I mean, massive pot to lose, almost $700 at a 1-3 game. Not the most fun. That's a lot of big blinds, but hey, got to chalk it up. Hopefully, I can win some money back in another hand. And if you've been in a spot like this before and you had your beautiful pocket kings, queens, or aces cracked by a lower pocket pair, I know you can feel my pain. So hey, why not scroll down, give me a thumbs up, and smash that sub button. I greatly appreciate it. And next hand for tonight... We're going to have a decent one. Pocket fives in small blind position. It's going to be 1-3 one, once again. And my opponent in low jacks is going to be opening to $15. It's going to fold to my opponent on the button. He's going to be putting in the call. I put in the call in small blind. And big blind is going to be putting in the call too. So we're we'll going four ways to a flop of 4-3 jack rainbow. Not the greatest flop for pocket fives, but we do have some backdoor equity gonna hit a six and a seven for a straight two or ace for a straight hey i could just turn a five a river a five for a set and sometimes i'll have the best hand so let's see if we can improve and mostly just hope nobody has a jack so yeah being out of position i'm gonna check big mine's gonna check low jack's gonna grab their chips and it's the same person that just stacked me about two to four minutes ago with their pocket eights they're gonna be putting in a bet of twenty dollars button is gonna fold I'm going to be putting in a call and big one is going to be folding. So we're going to be going heads up to the turn and it comes the five of hearts. I get my wish. I turn a set, but the set has now made straights on the board. So I have to be a little bit worried here. Not too much. I mean, I'm not worried. I just turned a damn set. Like, I think I'll be fine. If you have a straight, then take my money. Right. And we still have one card to go anyway. So yeah, I'm loving what I'm seeing. I put in a check. Open my opponent bets, and he does just that. Like I said, same person who just stacked me with those pocket eights a couple of minutes ago. Grabs his chips, but he only puts out a bet of $20. And I'm like, hmm, this is weird. This is, this is a bit awkward. Why are they betting only $20? I'm kind of confused here relative to the size of the pot. I mean, there's not much in there. This is less than a 25% bet. I have a set. So yeah, with all of those factors playing in, 
I'm going to be putting it in the check raise here. Or better yet, the check rizzle. We're going to be going for it. I'm thinking about my sizing. And with them bending so small here. And that backdoor flush coming in. And really don't want them to just get a free river for a little bit of money. I'm bumping it up. We're playing pretty deep here too. Especially with them just taking all of my damn money a couple of minutes ago. So yes, I'm putting in that check Rizzo. And I bump it all the way up to $250. Yes, I just 12x check Rizzo, ladies and gentlemen. That's exactly what I just did. And my opponent thinks about it for a little bit. And he grabs more chips than $250. And he three bets me on the turn to 500 And I'm like, holy shit in my mind. What is this? They bet small. I just check Rizzled massive. And they're just going to click me back. It's like online poker when they just click the raise, the, the min raise button back at you. It's so annoying. And I see that. I'm like, oh my God, what do I do here? And I go into the tank. I was pretty confused with this three bet on turn. I don't know if anybody else is confused at home. But at this point, let me know what you think he has in the comments below. And then after we get to the hand, let me know if you got it right. I think this is a pretty good exercise because, yeah, at this point, I'm believing he has a straight. I'm thinking in my mind and I'm like, he just has a straight. But the crazy thing is I already had one headphone off anyway. And I heard him say while he was putting in a 500 and a little bit after it, he said, I don't have a straight. And he's been honest the whole night. But I thought this is the one time he could be bullshitting me right now because I felt he had a straight. He says he doesn't have a straight. I'm still believing he has a straight. And I'm like, ah, oh, this is kind of weird with this three bet. But yeah, after tanking and thinking about it for a while, and because I just put him on a straight, I decide to just put in a call. Yes, just a call, nothing else. I want to see the river and see the action on there. And we're going to go to it. Heads up, of course. And it comes the four of hearts. What a beautiful fucking river. I boat up and it even brings in the backdoor flush drawer it is now a flush so if he did have some random hearts here he now has a flush and even if he did have a straight i'm winning and i'm like please just bet the river when i check please bet the river when i check and i do put in the check he looks at the dealer and he says i'm all in i immediately say i call and they turn over jack four offsuit Oh, are you kidding me? The famous Jack Four. Does she have Jack Four? She got four Jack High. What? Thank you, Robbie. What a beautiful, beautiful river for me. And then I turn over my pocket fives, and you hear the sighs and O's of the table because, yeah, that is one of those just cooler spots there. He did play the Jack Four, and. I end up hitting the set on the turn. If he hit the jack and set on the river, he would have took the pot down, but he boats up with the four. So he has a boat with fours full of jacks and I have a boat with fives full of fours. Love to see it. I stack my opponent for a massive pot. They went all in on the river for $900. I win almost all of the money back that I just lost to them with pocket kings love that i actually rebought and bought in for a lot of money to have them covered i initially thought i did not rebuy enough to have them covered and i was slightly upset as i was turning over my cards may have looked a little weird to the table that i was upset but that's what was really bothering me i wasn't upset that i freaking had the best hand i was upset that i didn't rebuy to the maximum to make sure when i stack my opponent i'm getting all the chips but the dealer did count everything out and i just had him covered by maybe 50 dollars or so so love to see it and my opponent he was really nice about it said nice hand didn't end up leaving the game after it but he said make sure you use this hand it was beautiful nothing wrong with that and i did say let him know that yeah it was just a cooler really tough spot i mean boat over boats don't happen in poker that often but hey, way to win it all back when I have my pocket kings cracked. So we lose to a two outer, but hey, I get fucking paid, baby. And is the heat going to continue here? Because yes, wake up with a big hand, pocket aces, in small blind, 
and the button has a 15 dollars straddle on so there's already a lot of money in the middle let's hope we can keep building this pot it's gonna fold all the way around to me in small blind and i make it 45 dollars to go big blind is gonna be folding and opponent to my right on the button he's gonna be putting in a call so we're gonna be going heads up to a flop of three king queen rainbow pretty good flop here for pocket aces Hoping my opponent just has a king or a queen. We can just start betting. Get some money in the middle. I mean, we have aces. We're looking pretty good. Let's hope no scary turns come in. So I do grab my chips. Load up a bet. I make it $55 to go. And my opponent doesn't take too long. He's going to be putting in a call. We go to the turn and it comes a rubber ducky. Two of hearts. That's the turn I want to see. Blankest card you can ever get in a deck of poker is a deuce the rubber ducky best turn and best river unless you like have a really 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 big draw and then you see the deuce come in the river and then you realize that you're just fucked but besides that rubber ducky is usually a pretty good card to come so yeah i'm not slowing down here still gonna load up the clip i grab my chips and i put out another bet of 200 dollars unfortunately after a couple of seconds my opponent does muck their cards face up said they're not gonna do anything here they have 10-9 offsuit. And yeah, don't blame them. What are you going to do? Call and hit your miracle gutter ball? Yeah. Good fold by my opponent. Nice hand by me. I show my pocket aces to be nice. And this is the same person that slow rolled me. Maybe I just never show them the hand. Nah, it was, it was a friendly game. It's okay. It was all good. So I do take down the pot with pocket aces. And final results here for tonight. We're going to combine the results from the stream. And the results from me playing after the stream at the tables. And we're going to come with a final result of losing $1,400. Not the worst result, especially after I punted $1,500 with Pocket Queens on stream, right? But hey, I still do love the ladies, of course.